What's up everybody? It's been a little while since I've done an update. Um, I was out here washing the car and you know it's pretty bad when your project car is taking so long that uh, it gets dirty sitting out here in the driveway and you got to wash it and clean it up. But I just got to looking at this uh, house of color organic green and realized hey I haven't updated a video in a while or gave you guys an updated video so uh, figured I'd let you see a little bit about what the outside of the car looks like. Um, it's all put back together other than the nose um, but I just thought that color was looking really good I'll uh, here in a second tell you what's going on with the supercharger but I wanted to show everybody this uh, these cars were notorious for the rubber uh, peeling off of these metal pieces up here on the uh, hatch so what I ended up doing and it's probably hard to see in the video a little bit of line there from where the old rubber was but I took these things off very carefully and saved all of my clips and then when I was painting the car I took a torch and uh, melted all of the rubber off of them so that they were bare metal and then I sanded them down and uh, painted them black and then clear coated them so I thought that looked really nice on there the only downside to doing that is they don't sit tight up against the window uh, there's a little bit of a gap there where you can see up here there's like a, a leaf not there but there there was a leaf underneath there right here so you will get some debris under it if you do it that way but uh, you can't buy these parts and if you find them on a used car the rubber is usually already peeled off of them so I figured that was a nice touch to shine that up but let me pop the hood and let's look at the uh, what I got going on with the supercharger all right guys let me show you what I got going on underneath here I got my uh, custom cold air intake built I bought a uh, three inch by two and three quarter uh, 90 uh, some eighth inch wall three inch pipe I think that's a three by three and a quarter that uh, was round but I stretched it over the oval end of the mass airflow sensor found the nifty green uh, inline filter and it's resting right above where I cut the larger hole uh, right before I painted it I uh, got my batteries mounted in there uh, they're actually producing 3.1 volts uh, resting which is good um, the I wished I would have made a video of my first start of this thing and I apologize for that I was had my neighbor over here he helped me download the uh, Chrome software into the ECU we got excited we started it uh, and I didn't think to have my video on so shame on me but those two batteries had no problem at all cranking the engine over I mean it felt nice and sounded nice and strong when it cranked over um, the engine started and uh, ran within a couple cranks which was uh, which shocked me because uh, I figured it would take a little bit to get it started but one of the big things I noticed right away was all of these boots sucked completely down my boost gauge was showing negative 22 which on a stock car at idle negative 18 to negative 22 is normal but I wasn't thinking about that uh, you know because this thing works a little bit different than a turbo car uh, turbo cars all of your boost is coming in ahead of the throttle body where on a supercharged car all of your boost and uh, airflow is happening after so I'm coming in here so when the car is under negative at idle all of these boots are seeing a negative pressure and they're sucking down uh, I watched some videos of some of the Miata guys that supercharge their Miatas and they hard pipe basically the whole system to keep that from happening um, I won't have that luxury with this um, well I could but I'm not gonna spend the time and the money to do it what I ended up doing to circumvent that as I cut uh, a bunch of these pieces I had a whole bunch of extra intercooler piping and then I'm gonna put these inside the boots uh, I'm gonna flare the edges ends of these a little bit so that they'll rest up against the pipe that's inserted in there but this will basically fill the void inside of all of my 90s and then I'll do the same for my 45s so that when this thing's under negative these boots won't collapse um, I noticed when I was revving the engine up it was taking me to about 3,000 rpm before this boot would inflate 
So uh, this is a 2.6 inch pulley, which was an alternator pulley I shared with you guys on a previous video. Um, I bought a two and a quarter. So my drive pulley down here is four and a half. So the two and a quarter will give me a two to one ratio. So uh, at, you know, red line, I'll be spinning this thing at 14,000 RPM, which is a little over its max, but uh, I don't ever really plan on driving that high of RPM. But I went with a slightly smaller to try and get uh, the boost to build quicker. But uh, we only had about a three minute run because my belt came off um, and it wreaked a little havoc. So I had to shut her down. But what happened was uh, when I rebuilt the supercharger, these shafts are kind of free floating and they have a spring on the backside that keeps the shaft pushed into the coupler. And when I pressed this pulley on, I didn't account for that. So when this thing was running, that the shaft decided to shift in about three millimeter. And when it did, it caused the belt to jump off of my tensioner. And then the belt went down into the timing cover. So I found a way to remedy that. This tensioner, this tensioner uh, right now, uh, and I showed you guys a picture of this on the previous video, is actually on the tension side of the belt. So it's coming from the supercharger onto the tensioner, onto the power steering, and then to the crank pulley down here. And so that's putting a lot of pressure on that tensioner. So I'm going to reroute the belt straight down to the power steering. Um, and when I come off the supercharger on the backside, since the motor turns this way, is I'm going to, instead of the tensioner pulling back, the tensioner is now going to push down on the belt. So I'll have tension on the slack side of the belt. So I think that'll be a big improvement. Uh, so I'm going to put metal or uh, intercooler pipe inside of these so they don't collapse. Go with a slightly smaller pulley pressed on there so that uh, when the shaft is seated, it's lined up. And then reroute the belt so that it's the tensioner is on the slack side. And I think that'll... Uh, take care of that problem next video i'll have this bad boy running um made me some custom plates to kind of clean up the wiring a little bit or cover it up some on this um since i did the intercooler i don't have a uh radiator uh reservoir or coolant reservoir uh i had to eliminate it because the stock one sits right underneath here so i bought i probably didn't need one but i bought a uh an aluminum two quart one that I mounted down in there because I got uh, extra room in here since it's a uh, you know naturally aspirated so I got my coolant reservoir there I bought this power distribution block here you know there's my my batteries come in there uh, there's my amp wire there's my hot wire for my uh, fuel pump then here's my uh, power wire for my ignition and then this is my wire that goes to the starter then I took the ground and grounded it straight to the frame underneath here. So really cleaned it up a lot. Uh, still got to finish my brakes. I'll do a quick, probably a short on finishing my brakes because uh, I don't have no fluid in there. But I got my calipers rebuilt and repainted. So basically at this point, I am almost there to having this bad boy running so that we can start uh, doing some tuning on it. So... I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking in here with me, and I apologize for being so long uh, posting a video, but uh, hopefully I'll be pretty quick getting another video up with uh, the front end on and this bad boy running. I'll bring you guys in uh, when I do the first start after my modifications. That way, if something goes wrong, you can see it firsthand with me. So, hope everybody has a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.